Good morning, Julia. Good morning. Um, uh, vaccine passports being brought in. I mean, I mean, Northern Ireland has followed suit after Wales and Scotland uh, already. We've seen those across large swathes of Europe. And now the use of uh, this sort of two, you know, two tier society where you've got medical apartheid. If you're vaccinated, you can live a relatively normal life. If you're unvaccinated, you can only go to work, go out to exercise and buy essential goods. Other than that, you're trapped in your home. Um, how does this tackle COVID? Well, I think the, the, the problem is that you know, well, it's not a problem. Vaccination works. It really does prevent disease. It prevents people being hospitalised. It, it it looks after the NHS, and it, and it's it's working. It's safe. It's effective. And so, what we need to do is try and persuade those people who are, who are not vaccinated to to get vaccinated. And I think then the problem will will diminish. So that this is this is the issue that, that well, we're hold facing. on a minute. I mean, yes, the vaccines work. I'm double jabbed. Delighted that my parents in their 70s have had their boosters as well. Um, but you're talking about this is about to try and persuade. Um, banning people from leaving their homes in a, in a lockdown just for people who are unvaccinated. That's not persuasion, is it? That's I mean, that's that's force. That's that's almost mandating uh, that, that, um, vaccines, isn't it? As a medical professional, Surely all health care under you know, Nuremberg rules, for goodness sake, all health care should be, you know, freely chosen and, and with informed consent rather than being forced on people so they can go and live a normal life. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not in favour of, of mandatory vaccination. I'm not in favour of these partial lockdowns, you know, the, as you call it, medical apartheid. So selecting those people who haven't been vaccinated, what we have to do is, is maintain the pressure on people to get vaccinated and persuade people maintain, why should... yeah you see but maintain the pressure um, yeah but I mean, a lot of this is i mean lots of people there are people who are conspiracy theorists who think you know bill gates mm -hmm. is injecting something into them there are people who are uh, fearful of this there are people who've had covid themselves already and and you know not cons not concerned about getting the, the the virus now many of these things can be addressed with simple you know dealing with the facts and giving people the statistics and sitting down with people wouldn't that be a better way of doing it than simply banning people from leaving their own homes? Exactly. That's what I think we should be doing. But, you know, we've been trying to do that for the last year. But I think th those people who are, don't want to get vaccinated will have heard plenty of arguments to, about vaccination and they're, they're just not taking any heed of that. So I guess that this is this is the ultimate response to that is to enable everybody else to live a, live a normal life. That how does how does someone else being unvaccinated? I mean, look, look I, my vaccination, uh, they, the vaccines were developed to protect individuals. You know, the person who has the vaccine is protected from to a huge extent from being getting seriously ill, being hospitalised uh, and dying. There was the added bonus with the alpha variant that it, they appeared to stop transmission to a great extent as well. Um, not so much with Delta. There is an effect. People not likely to get the virus. It was less likely to get it and less likely, therefore, to transmit it if you are vaccinated. I understand that. But it's not foolproof. And we've, we, we, we can see that with the vaccine passport rules in large parts of Europe, um, like, including Germany, where um, they're seeing a massive hike in, in cases, even though they had vaccine passports for, for months, uh, you know, trying to ensure people are vaccinated. So... Um, what what I don't understand is is why does someone else not being vaccinated impact on me? Because they're more likely to transmit that virus if they have it. But if I'm not going but, to get seriously ill or be hospitalised or die, you, what do you, I care? You don't you don't you don't know that because vaccination is not one hundred percent effective. But it isn't. It's but it isn't. A, but neither is it flu. We 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 don't no. we don't make people who've got. When we've got a flu bout, we don't make those people stay at home. We don't have a we don't have an apartheid system for them. So now we've now we've got this disease down to a flu like level of risk, which is what it is with people vaccinated. Why why are we concerned? Shouldn't we just be living our normal lives and letting people go about their business? And if people want to put themselves at extra risk, so be it. We allow people to be obese. We allow people to smoke. We allow people to 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 you know to to go on motorbikes. We allow people to live lots of do lots of things in their lives that are risky. That's their choice. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. So I'm, I'm not sure what we're arguing no, about. I'm, here. No, that's what I don't understand. Is like, but why why does some people not being vaccinated? Why does that affect? you and me being vaccinated or any one of my listeners who is vaccinated. If people end up in hospital very tragically because they've not been vaccinated, well, that's their concern as far as I'm, is, is my, my view. Well, it is, but it is also society's concern because if lots of people are not vaccinated and getting infected, there's a great possibility of, of new variants arising. You know, we've got Delta, maybe we'll get the next one, which might even avoid the vaccination. 
it might it might get round up the immune system that in vaccinated people. So, you know, but hold on a minute. Once again, if we were that concerned right. about it, then we would be sending our vaccines instead of vaccinating twelve year olds who who really you know the JCV I don't think need it. We'd be sending our vaccines to the developing world where billions of people don't have uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> access to vaccines. I mean, if we're really concerned about new variants, there are rather more sensible things to be doing with our time than. In the, than what Germany's doing and vaccine passports mm -hmm. in the rest of the UK, surely? Absolutely. We, sh we should be sending our vaccines to other countries. We should be making sure that this vaccine, vaccine inequity is, is addressed so that people can be vaccinated uniformly across the globe. But, but that's not happening. So Do you, you, know, we're do you think it can ever be justified for this country or any other country to bring in a system where the vax, I mean, we've already got it in terms of quarantine and self-isolation for travel, but in terms of normal everyday life here in the UK, that the unvaccinated have their life restricted when the vaccinated don't? I don't think we can do that. I think it would be very difficult to, to administer that and to, and to mandate that. How, how are you going to administer that on a daily basis? How, you know, how, are, you going to, how are you going to do that? I'm, I, I don't know how, where the resources would come from to... to, uh, to Okay. to resource that. You know, I, I just don't know. Well, again, that never seems to stop uh, governments bringing this in, does it? Uh, Professor uh, Mark Harris, a professor of virology at the University of Leeds, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you.